that camera, smartphone camera thing right there, takes some pretty good video. But this gear I have makes it not very much fun to do. So we're gonna build some new stuff. All right, here's a mock-up of our phone and there's future me recording the video, having a great time. Uh, and this is my basic plan of attack. We're going to have a frame that this goes into. Uh, I wanna have a USB hub on this so I can record to an external SD card and hook up my microphone. And I'm gonna focus a lot of my attention on this attachment point. So I'll preface this with the fact that I'm a camera gear newbie, but everything I've seen keeps the bit on the camera very simple. So a plate, you know, that just attaches to the camera and it requires all the complexity of locking it together on the other end. So like on the tripod head. So what I'd like to do is flip that around and move some of that complexity onto the camera case so that I can have multiple mounting points that are very, very simple and easy to duplicate um, in various spots around my workspace. I'm going to forgo a lot of concept sketching and jump straight into CAD to define my basic dimensions and get some hard points to work around. And this is just because there's a lot of physicality to this thing that I want to test as I go by building a real thing. But I'm not really going to focus on the CAD or the 3D printing process here. I, I want to focus on the iterative process. How you can start out pretty simply and not try to solve everything all at once. Just get something you can react to, something you can learn from. You might discover questions or trade-offs you didn't have in mind when it was still just an idea. Now, right now, I'm concerned with pretty basic things like checking fit and dimensions. And uh, I think this is looking pretty good. My first thought for the mount is using a dovetail. This is not unlike existing camera plates, but I've moved the lock onto the camera. Now I've got a washer sliding in a track and there's a small embedded magnet behind it. It keeps the washer in position and gives it a really nice positive feel to moving it back and forth. Um, also magnets are magical and when possible you should use magnets for stuff. I like this approach because it's fast to operate, but it's got some play in it that causes the camera to wiggle. Um, so we'll keep that one in our back pocket and try for something more secure. So the orange part will be a printed knob that gets affixed to the top of a bolt. And the green bit is a speed nut, just a thin sheet metal nut that I'll embed in the housing so that when we turn the knob, it pushes down on the top of our dovetail piece. To capture that, I've split the case down the middle um, and it'll sandwich around the locking mechanism. And I've also had to cut it up left to right because the parts are just too big for my printer. But a little tape and we can slap it together to get to something. This mechanism is a little more effort to use, but it's really not bad, um, and it feels totally rock solid. I knew at the start I'd need access to the phone buttons and trying the last prototype, I was instantly reminded of that fact. Now the side button was straightforward. I could sandwich it between the front and back with some flexible arms to act like springs. Uh, but with all the mass at the bottom of this design, I tried out having the other ones just slide in a track 
at a 45 degree angle. They don't need much travel. And I figured I'd just see how well they work without any additional kind of spring keeping them in place. This one I assembled with threaded inserts and I definitely went overboard here. Sometimes you take a turn down an over complexifying path. Um, and this was definitely one. And after a small cloud of PLA fumes, um, make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area, my friends. Um, I knew the next version would need to take a step back on my approach to the construction. Now, don't get me wrong. These totally have a place in my toolbox, but as you can see here, it's kind of, uh, kind of overkill. I'm also going to work on shrinking parts down so I can fit them on the printer without slicing them up into quite so many pieces. But um, this is starting to feel like a thing I can use. So I'm going to do some more testing try this thing out. Um, and hey, check this out. I can push the button and it starts recording and stop recording. So that's pretty cool. And if I push right here, it goes to sleep. And I almost forgot, but those magnets on the front are for attaching our USB hub or whatever accessory we might want to add. Okay, version five. And we are in the home stretch. The main body is now a single part, so no more front and back housing. Um, if this were injection molded, that would be difficult, but this is 3D printing land, so we can produce things that are impossible or very costly to do with other methods. Um, the closure now will be hinged, and I've redesigned the button mechanism so it works from either side of the device. The attachment method for the hub, USB hub, is much more secure. And the biggest change is in the mounting. So after using the last one, I've decided that speed was less of an issue than adjustability. Um, we'll take a closer look at that in a minute, but first let's check out the button design because I think it's an interesting solution. So I made this small portion to prove out my concept. Uh, now these line up with the controls on the phone and there is a small cam that pivots when you push the button on the case. As it pivots and the profile changes, it activates the button on the phone. Um, here's what the case button looks like, and this is the cam. Now I laser cut these because it took a lot of trial and error to get the shape right, and the laser just made that a much faster process. So here's what's going on. The slot through the button is not straight. It's got these two opposing triangle shapes where the tips become pivot points and the faces limit the travel of the cam. So as I push the button, the cam rotates on a lower pin and the top face pushes on the phone button. And this hole is for a single coil spring that runs through the housing and all three of the buttons so that they return to their home position and gives it that oh so satisfying springy action. And with that test complete and working pretty well. Um, now we just need to put it in the real deal. Okay, moving on to how we'll mount the camera. It might feel like I'm backpedaling, and I guess I am for now, on the benefits of that quick connect system, but um, stay with me. Now, this knob is gonna capture a weld nut. 
And I use this because the shape allows it to hang out from the bottom of the knob and act as a bearing surface to rotate on. The knob gets captured between the two halves so we can tighten it down on a traditional quarter 20 bolt like most standard tripod bases. But since the knob is always accessible, we can tighten it down without disassembly. And it also means we won't always need to print a base part. It can just mount on any through bolt. And it gives us another axis of rotation when positioning it. So hang on as we put this together and you'll see what that looks like in a bit. And here I'm assembling one side of the pivot, uh, just using another weld nut, uh, only, only as an axle. Um, and on the other side, we'll capture this bolt. Now it's way too long, so we've got to take a quick walk out to the workshop to cut this down to size. When we bought this house, I was very excited to have a small garage to set up as a workshop. Unfortunately, I recently had to tear apart a wall to fix a rotting sill plate, and it is currently a complete disaster in here. But as luck would have it, I actually know where to find the tool I'm looking for this time, and we can make quick work of this bolt. The fit was a bit tight, so just need to hit the faces on the top of the bolt, and then we can pop it into place. It's important that this fits tightly, and its rotation needs to be fixed relative to this part because we'll have a set screw pushing against it to hold the angle position of the camera. And this weld nut I'm dropping into place is going to hold that set screw. Now, I also got to say, I love bent nose pliers. Not sponsored, but hey, bent nose pliers, guys, excellent work. Now, using brass or something softer for the axle would give the set screw something easier to bite into, but this is what I have, and we'll see how it works. Now, this whole subassembly gets dropped down into place, also conveniently covering up the cutouts on the bottom for the button mechanism. And this part captures the bolt we installed, completing our left and right sides of our pivot. Now, it will get secured with a screw running through it. For that screw and for these tiny M2 screws that I'm using here, I'm just tapping them directly into the plastic this time. There's really no room for threaded inserts, and they're not really needed here. As long as you're very careful and only taking it apart a couple times, uh, it shouldn't strip out the threads. But these are very tiny, so you got to go slow. Now I'm just cutting some eighth inch brass rod to use in the hinge for the side closure and screw clamps are great for hanging on to small parts like this. And no need for glue, it's just gonna be a good friction fit. Here I'm cleaning up the cavity for a magnet. And I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, this magnet is way too small. It does not inspire confidence uh, putting your phone in, in here, but I was able to do a little surgery and replace this with a bigger one later. And that's it. Let's check this thing out. <laughs> 